Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to Wing Logic. In today's grammar video, we're going to talk about as if and as though, as requested by one of my subscribers who brought up this interesting topic after I mentioned the subjunctive in this video over here. At the end of the video, after you've listened to my explanation, I would like you to write in the comments what idea this sentence conveys. You look as if you didn't sleep last night. Night. And now, let's get started. First of all, there is no difference between as if and as though. Some books and teachers may try to find a very obscure and ultra-philosophical difference between them, but we don't see it or feel it in normal English when we speak and write. That being said, as if is the more common of the two options. Though, as a single word is very common and it's used in final position to mean however or but. And whilst there is no difference between as if and as though, so they're basically synonyms, the same doesn't apply to even if and even though, where there is a clear difference between the two. As if and as though are used to create a comparison, so they describe what a situation seems like. They behave as if or as though they are the managers means that their behaviour resembles and is like that of a manager. She looks as if or as though she knows the solution. As is a function word that goes weak, so whilst I pronounce it as a in a strong form, so when I refer to the construction, as if, as though. In connected speech, this a turns into a weak schwa, so we go from as if to as if. We don't actually say, she looks as if she knows the solution. We say, she looks as if she knows the solution. Let's have a look at what happens with verb tenses, and from now on, since as if and as though are synonyms, I will only write as if, just to keep things shorter and neater. The first sentence is, she looks as if she knows the solution, where we're talking about the present because the verb before, as if, looks, is in the simple present. When the verb after, as if, is in a real tense, and by real I mean the indicative mood, because that conveys the idea of a true or probable fact. This sentence does indeed convey this same idea, so this means that it's very likely, it's very probable, that she knows the solution. In the sentence, she looks as if she knew the solution. The verb after or as if is now in the past subjunctive, which is the same structure as the simple past. And this conveys the idea of an untrue fact. So basically, this sentence means that she wants to give the impression that she knows the solution, but we know that she doesn't, or we know that it's very likely that she doesn't. So the difference between the first and the second sentence is that in the first sentence, it's very likely there is a very high chance that she does know the solution. And some people would say that it's 100% sure that she does. Whereas in the second one, it's very likely there is a very high chance that she doesn't. In both sentences, the first verb looks is in the present because both these sentences do refer to now. They both connect the concepts of she looks now and she knows now. Whilst it's clearer in the first sentence because we have she looks as if she knows the solution, it's less evident in the second one because we have new. But we need to remember that this is not a simple past, it's a past subjunctive, which in English gives the idea of simultaneity, so things happening at the same time. It's the same as if I said, I wish I knew the solution. That sentence combines the concepts of I wish now and I know now, but together, no turns into new. If my friend looks tired and energyless right now, I can tell them these two things. You look as if you haven't eaten all day, or you look as if you hadn't eaten all day. Can you guess the difference? In the first one, because we have a real tense in the indicative, the present perfect, this refers to a real and probable fact. So maybe it is 
true that you haven't eaten all day. And now it gets a little bit mentally tricky. If I say you hadn't eaten all day, this is a past perfect subjunctive which refers to an untrue fact, meaning that the fact that you haven't eaten all day is unlikely, which means that it's very likely that you have eaten today, but you still look tired despite that. We've still kept look in the simple present, but in these two sentences, we're now connecting the present to the past. You look now, and you haven't eaten in the past up to now. In the subjunctive, this idea of anteriority, which means of something happening before something else, is given by the past perfect subjunctive, hadn't eaten. If we go from look to looked, we now have she looked as if she knew the solution. And in this case, we're connecting two past ideas. She looked yesterday and she knew yesterday. We can interpret this in two ways, which we can only guess from the context. There are no other grammatical elements in the sentence that can help us decipher this concept more clearly. We can see new as an indicative simple past, so a real tense that gives the idea of a true probable fact. So yesterday it was very likely that she knew the solution. But we can also see new as a past subjunctive, which, as we said before, creates the idea of simultaneity, so two things happening at the same time. If it is a past subjunctive, this means that it conveys the idea of an untrue fact, and the sentence is then interpreted as if she wanted to give the impression that she knew the answer yesterday, but we knew yesterday that she didn't, or we knew that it was very likely that she didn't. And again, this is open to interpretation based on the context, so we can't really tell how likely it was yesterday that she knew the solution. You looked as if you hadn't eaten all day, gives the idea of anteriority again. You looked yesterday and you hadn't eaten beforehand up until the moment I saw you. Hadn't eaten could be the past perfect of the indicative, a real tense which gives a true fact. So yesterday it was very likely that you hadn't eaten. But it could also be the past perfect of the subjunctive, which creates anteriority of an untrue fact. So yesterday it was very likely that you had eaten, but you still look tired when I saw you. When we talk about a simultaneous untrue fact, we need the past subjunctive. And what happens with the verb to be is that we have two options, a more informal and spoken one. She acts as if she was the manager and a more sophisticated and formal one, which is the one that I suggest you use in English exams, which is she acts as if she were the manager. The same way we say, I wish she were here. If you say, have you got a promotion yet? And I reply, as if. This is a spoken expression that we use to say that we very much doubt something is likely to happen or that it will happen at all. So that means that I would probably never get a promotion because I don't think my boss would ever be interested in giving one to me. And I don't even think my boss notices me at all. After explaining all this grammar about as if and as though to you, it's probably time for me to tell you that we don't actually use these two structures at all, because in spoken English we tend to prefer their informal version, which is like, and like is followed by a real indicative tense all the time. We would never really say she looks as if she knows or she knew the solution. We'd just say she looks like she knows the solution. You look as if you haven't or hadn't eaten all day simply becomes you look like you haven't eaten all day. And as you can see, if you use like, you can't really give the idea of how likely something is because we lose that concept by using only a real tense. In the past, we simply say she looked like she knew the solution and you looked like you hadn't eaten all day. 
Now that you know all this grammar, I want you to go back to my first question and I want you to write in the comments how we can interpret the sentence You look as if you didn't sleep last night. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments how you would interpret the sentence that I gave you and also if you have any other questions regarding how we use these structures and their grammar. In the meantime, I will see you on Thursday with my next quick vocabulary video and on Tuesday with another explanation one.